What was I like as a student? Um, that depends what year. So in my first year in undergrad, uh, I was a really, really good student, and then I discovered student life, and it deteriorated after that. <laughs> but uh, no, I was a, I was a, um, the type of student that did very well if I was really interested in a topic, and uh, you know, just moderately okay if if I wasn't that interested in a topic. Business to me, uh, you know, I grew up uh, with a single mom, and so business to me was how you how you fed your family and how you how you survived. And uh, as somebody who left home at 17, I pretty early on had to figure out how to make ends meet. So my interest in business was not from a um, theoretical or, you know, get rich quick scheme kind of idea. It was really about this is what you do to survive. So um, I did go to, I did my undergrad, uh, paid for my university by working. And uh, this was in the early 80s, and at the time there was a recession, as, as much as there is today. There was, it was near impossible to get a job as a student. And uh, so I decided to, um, I decided the only route was to start a business of my own, and this is in uh, third year university. And uh, I applied for a government grant, a student venture loan, which is still a program that's in existence today, and uh, started a cleaning business called SuperMade. Actually, at the time it was called Student Made. Uh, works and uh, we handed out flyers my partner and I and we basically went around cleaning homes uh, my favorite story to tell though is when my mother asked well how are you gonna pay for next year I said I'm starting a cleaning business and she said you never cleaned anything in your life this is not gonna be very good um, but anyways we were determined and we had no business courses no background but we knew that if we handed out flyers stood outside of Parliament Hill that uh, somebody would hire us and somebody did and then word of mouth the business sort of grew and um, I then had the audacity to say uh, we have this great business we should we should uh, sell it because it's the end of the summer we got to go back to school so I advertised in the Ottawa Citizen and uh, for a, a buyer to the question around how did I get started in business it was really through necessity and uh, then uh, combined with a little audacity and imagination and then uh, a lot of hard work and um, realized oh this can actually uh, this can actually be really good but I really wanted to be a journalist originally so I still wasn't I still didn't take uh, business courses or anything like that but it taught me a little bit about business so that's how I got started in that and then when I graduated from Carleton um, I ended up in a sales job which I never thought I would nobody actually takes a sales job and wants to be in sales um, I can't tell you how many people I've interviewed over the 18 years uh, in sales roles who said, I, I don't like, I don't think I'm cut out for sales. And I was in that but, uh, bucket too, but somebody convinced me that I might be good at it. So I gave it a try because, again, it was still a recession and I still needed to make ends meet at this point. And uh, so took the job and I thought I'd only do it for six months and I ended up staying in the industry and uh, for 18 years and ending up as president of McGraw-Hill and working in the States and doing a lot with that. So. That was my corporate period, and during that period, working with multinational companies, um, I also learned a great deal about business. I uh, was fortunate enough to get a lot of training and uh, opportunity within a corporate setting that then sort of layered on top of my uh, my hard streetwise entrepreneurship level. It layered on the uh, the large company kinds of uh, more management um, kinds of uh, learning as opposed to just opportunity and cash management kinds of learning. I love my job, I love my industry, uh, but then uh, like a lot of women later in life uh, had a baby and uh, the job I was doing was requiring, you know, as president I, I did a lot of travel and uh, was away a lot and that was hard and so I decided at that point my entrepreneurship experience as a youth uh, was enough for me to feel confident to try it again. And the, the reason I went into it again this time was really about lifestyle uh, and control of schedule. Not retiring, not doing less, but uh, with a baby in tow, I didn't want to travel as much, and this to me was a, was a great option. So um, that's when we started the dairy, Fifth Town Artists and Cheese. Um, another, uh, another story where I had no background in the industry and, and no experience in agriculture or dairying or any of that some, such thing but uh, put the investment and time into learning about it and uh, that was sort of a seven eight year run um, so my point is that uh, entrepreneurship once you've learned even if you learn it as a student and you're just doing it for a summer or a year or two to make ends meet while you're getting on to other things 
um, and you're not the next uh, Facebook product and things like that, you'll circle back to what you learned during that time in your lifetime because I actually think entrepreneurship is a, a life skill, not just a, a job that you choose. It's a lifestyle and a life skill. Like So I'd like to bring it back to uh, basics, which is um, it's about putting an idea together, starting a venture, and uh, you know, selling, making a product or a service, figuring out the industry, figuring out how to make money in it, and figuring out how to grow it. And, uh, and yes, maybe there's an exit strategy somewhere down the road, and um, depending on the type of business you're doing, there should be. But um, that's what I find is missing a little bit in the entrepreneurship world these days. My advice to students is that uh, them, whether they're first year philosophy students or um, agricultural students or engineering students, everyone should understand the basics of starting a business, the, pro the entrepreneurial process as I would call it, from, from beginning to end. Uh, because it is a life skill. Just like you need to know other things, um, you will need to draw on that. And if you don't draw on it right away, it will help you if you are going to work for somebody else for a while. And it will help you uh, figure out, uh, have a safety net for those times when there's going to be gaps in your employment. And I think in the next 20, 30 years that all of, you know, everyone will be dealing with gaps in their employment. And this is a way to uh, be resilient through economic upturns and downturns, that sort of thing. So it's a life skill. So that's my recommendation. Everybody should learn about the entrepreneurial process and tuck it away and pull it out when they need it. The 90s was the, you know, the E the E world or the I world, the internet world. I think the next 20 years are going to be the F world, which means food, whether it's uh, solving hunger or food and nutrition or wellness. Food is a nexus, is a sort of a center point that everyone will be talking about for the next 20 years. And I think there's a lot of entrepreneurship opportunity in the food sector in particular. so But I think entrepreneurship is what's likely going to save the planet because if you get uh, a lot of um, you know, people looking for unique intersections and willing to apply themselves to the world's problems in a market-driven way, I think that could really solve a lot of, uh, or work towards solving a lot of the world's problems. So why not use business skills, market um, mechanisms to solve the world's problems, not just create them? And that sort of speaks to the whole idea of social entrepreneurship, not just from the uh, social end of things, but for the for-profit social entrepreneurship side. And I think there's tremendous opportunity in that space. So entrepreneurship is probably going to be the thing that makes the world a better place from it, the uh, business side of the equation. And don't get me started on CSR. Um, I think corporations, who existing corporations, uh, need to move more in that direction, and many of them do and try, and, and some are successful, some are not, but it's not enough. So we will need to unleash that spirit to make the, the world a better place.